Hello, in this video we're going to pick up from last time in uh, scraping some of these more difficult pages. And um, so this one, well, let me if I just head back here to kind of see where we are. Last time we did these two. Um, now we're going to see how we can pull out data from a page that might have some sort of password on it. Um, and again, right, if you're kind of doing this on uh, somebody else's site, make sure that you're kind of following all their um, user agreements, right? Often when you create an account, they'll say you can't do things like this, but, you know, sometimes they might let you. Um, so if I say like something like secret here, um, that wasn't it, it's Fido. So I'm gonna say Fido and then hit enter and, um, and then it loads this page. And this is what I would like to be able to pull out uh, from this page. I'm gonna head over here to my notebook and I've already done some of my setup here like before. Um, the main thing is that I have this web driver and from that I'm gonna say Chrome and that's gonna return a new browser to me. And the thing I have to pass in are some options. And that's another type right here. I have these options uh, for specifically for Chrome. I kind of have to make sure I match that up. And, um, and so I'm going to say um, down here, options equals options, like so. And then uh, if I wanted to, I could say um, after that, I could say something like options.headless equals true. And, and that would give me no GUI. And, um, and so that's what I would do, um, for example, if I was on my virtual machine. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm running this on my um, notebook or my laptop right now. And so I think it'll be a little easier to see what's going on um, if I don't do that. So I'm going to do that. And then let me run this. And why is that unhappy? Uh, let me see. Tends the errors here tend to be kind of pretty opaque. Expected string bytes or OS path, not an options object. And um, and you know I think my mistake was is when I passed in my options. I'm just trying to check in my notes. Uh, I need to say options equals that. So that's the parameter name. I'm gonna do that, and um, and that should pop up a window here. And it does, which is good. And so I'm gonna move that over here to the right. And, and then the page I want to do is this one. Right, so I'm gonna grab this. And I'm gonna paste this here. Maybe I'll say that's like my URL equals that thing. And I'm gonna say um, b.get that URL. So that'll navigate me to that page, like so. And then I have to figure out how to type into that box. And, and so kind of over on this other window I have, um, I'm going to right click on here and inspect it in Chrome so I can figure out, um, you know, how I should refer to it. And, um, and I can see that it's this input, input box right here and it has an ID of password. And, and so my hope is that I can do something like this. I should be able to say B dot, um, uh, find element by ID, find element by ID. What was the ID again? One more time. The ID was password. And so I'm going to say password here. And, um, <clears throat> and it finds it, which is good, right? I mean, if it was something else, then I would hit that exception. Uh, but it did indeed find it. I'm going to store it here. So I'm going to call this like my password box. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, and so once I found it, I can do things like this. I can um, send it keys. I can simulate um, that I'm typing there. Right, so I could say something like, you know, password dot send keys. And, um, and then I can just like put whatever I wanted there, right? I could send it like an, uh, you know, an F. And then you can see it typed over there on the right hand side, right? I could send it, um, you know, I could send it an I, I could send it a D. You know, if I really want to, I can send it the whole thing at once, right? I can put a longer string in if I like. And so let me just try to reload the page so I can do that. So I'm going to do that. And, um, and now I have to do the second part, which is simulating the click on this button right here. So let me head back here and kind of remember what that button was called. So I'm going to right click on this and inspect. And uh, that one is called login button, right? So I'm going to head back here and I'm going to say button equals find element by ID. And it was login button, I think. Didn't crash, so I must be good. And uh, and then I can simulate my click. I can say button 
dot click like so and um and why is that not uh kind of simulating my click let me try it again sometimes it kind of gets out of whack but if i click over here what does it do well that loads it um what am i doing wrong here mm. Sorry, I had to pause the, the video there for a minute to figure out what was going on. And uh, well, I guess I didn't find anything exciting. I think that um, this framework is a little bit flaky. And ultimately when I did a kernel restart and uh, it just started working. So I'm just gonna kind of step us through again here. And uh, I'm gonna create, um, create that window like so. Let me, let me have this here and um, let me have this just like so. And then I'm going to grab that page and like so. And, um, and then I'm going to type in the password and I'm going to hit the button and, and then the page loads. And then finally, I can actually say, um, you know, browser dot uh, page source. And maybe I'll print that out. And um, and now I actually have something that I could um, work with, right? I have my t uh, my table tag and then my my rows and, and TDs and that. And, and I could have, of course, used Beautiful Soup to kind of pull all of that out into a data frame um, uh, if I wanted to. So anyway, maybe the lesson there is that um, for this kind of code where we're dealing with the internet, uh, things just kind of randomly go wrong and it's not our fault. So what I might want to do is I might want to have some sort of loop so that, you know, if it fails, uh, maybe it will try, retry two or three times uh, before just kind of giving uh, giving up. You know, I think at the end here, right, I can close my browser. And so you could totally imagine that it might do that as part of the loop. It might create a new browser and try it. And if it fails, well, it'll just do it again. Maybe something wacky just happened. Okay, so that was one example. Um, the other example here is, um, let me see here. Let me hit back. It's on this last page where we have a search query. And on this one, let's say I want to do like 1950. Um, I get some uh, hurricanes. I think I had some in that year. Uh, my goal is that I want to go through each of these years and, um, and kind of pull out how many there are per year. And then I want to end up with some sort of plot like this at the bottom uh, where I have a line plot of all how many hurricanes are there per year. Um, so that's the goal. Well, let me, let me create a new notebook here for this one. And I get a fresh start. And I'm going to copy some of these things over from last time. My new notebook. I'm going to grab all that stuff. And then I probably want all of this as well. Let me kind of just move to the front so you can actually see what's going on here. Okay, and that opened up my new window, just like so. And um, and let me grab my URL from that other page. I'm gonna come back here and, um, and grab this thing. And oh, well, I'm just gonna close this. I think I'm done with it. And I'm gonna say b.get that URL. So URL equals that page. And like so. And it's loading. My internet's being a little flaky. I don't know why I'm having so many problems today. Let me do a kernel restart and run all. There we go. I get that, and then it should load the page. Uh, let's see. All right, sorry, I had to pause again. For whatever reason, my um, internet was down, so I'm gonna try this one more time. Uh, restart and run all, just like so. I should have probably been running these on pages on my own laptop, so I wasn't so dependent on the internet. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna load that thing, and uh, and here I am, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to grab these two elements. I want to grab um, 
let me see here. I want to grab um, that uh, year box and then also the search box. And so let me just try to check what those are called. Um, if I come here, now right click on and hit inspect. I guess it's year and then search button. So I'm going to say um, year equals b dot get. Um, actually, I think it's it's find element by ID and um, and the one I want is um, year and then search button. So I'm going to say year and then I'm going to have my button uh, search button. Okay, so I'm going to have that and that all worked fine. And um, and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to find um, I mean, really a little function that will try to tell me how many um, how many hurricanes there were in a given year. So uh, maybe I'll call this let me call this like something like year year text or something. So I know it's a text box. I'm gonna call this one you know like get years or or maybe get count. I'm gonna pass in a year. And um, and so what I'll do first when I call this thing is I'm gonna take that year text and I'm gonna send it some keys. And, and the keys I'm gonna send it are whatever is in that year as a string. I'm going to do that. And, um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that button do a search, right? So let's try this. Um, you know, there's more I have to do here. I have to, like, you know, count the hurricanes. Uh, but let's try that so far. And, um, and what is my problem? Um, did I run this again? Apparently. Um, okay, so online. Six. Oh, I need to pass in the year. So I'll say 1950. And I, and I have that. And so let me try to figure out how many um, how many rows are on that table. And um, let, let me actually just do this. I'm going to say D of B, so I can have remember what functions I have there. Um, we've already seen find element by ID, right? But there's other versions of these, like there's plurals, where we can get lists of elements. And, um, and maybe instead of trying to find it by ID, maybe I want to find it by the tag name. So, so something I could do here, I could say something like b find elements by tag name. And I'm looking for all the table row tags. And you see I get this nice list of them. How, how many are there? It looks like there are four, um, which is one too many, right? Because there's like the header row at the top, you know, where it says named, formed, dissipated. And, and so really, I think this is the expression I want. I want to figure out how many rows are there, right? So I'm going to copy that thing. And that's how I'm going to return here, right? I'm going to return however many rows there are uh, minus one. I'm going to run that. And do uh, and you see my problem? It's just kind of adding to the end of that box. Right? I need to have some sort of way to clear it out. So again, I mean, I could be Googling documentation, but it's very handy to just run that dir, right? So if I run dir like that, I can see all the things I can do uh, to a text box, right? And, and I can see, oh, well, it's kind of nice. I have this clear thing. I'm going to try that and see if that works. It sounds like it might do something. So if I do clear and uh, it works like a charm. So I'm just going to come up here and uh, and add this at the very beginning, right? So now I'm in pretty good shape. I say I want to get 1950. There's there's three. I want to get 1951. There's zero. 1954. And there's two. So on and so forth. And um, and so now I think I'm in business. I think I could actually try to build up my build up my data, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pandas series. I'm going to say import pandas as pd and that's you know probably more appropriate place for that is up at the top like this and um and so i'm going to create a series like this and um and then what i'll do is i'll just like loop from uh, kind of 1950 until the present let me just remember how many years it draws I, I guess i'll just draw until um 2020. so i'll say um for the year in range of 1950 1950 to 2020, um, what I will do is I will figure out how, what the count was that year. And I'll say that, you know, I may have my year here 
and then that's going to be equal to well, however many were in that year. Let me let me actually just try to set it to something smaller first. So I'll say something like 1954. And uh, what happened to my other window? Well, let's just try this and see what happens. And um, and I'm hitting an error here. So it doesn't like this line right here. In 1950, which I guess I'm using as the key is out of bounds. It says I can only go to zero. And, and, and so remember when we have pandas series, um, there's this ambiguity, right? When I put something in brackets, do I mean like the integer position? And if I mean integer position, it's just counting up from zero, one, two, three, four. Or am I trying to use this more like a dictionary, in which case I want to use kind of an index in general. And, and so if I'm at the integer position, I would say this. If I want to use it like a, right, so this would be like a list. I'd be using my series. If I do that, then I'd be using it like a dictionary. And so I'm going to run that. And, um, and now I'm doing a little better. You, you can also see it's complaining because I haven't really specified what type my series is. So I'm just going to make it happy and say I'm dealing with integers. And, and now I actually it kind of went pretty fast there, right? Did you see it? Let me um, let me take a look at this series. And I see, well, there are, it's going, right? I'm kind of figuring out how many there are per year. And, um, and that's good. Let me slow this down just a bit so we can see what's happening. I'm going to say import time. And then maybe each time I grab one of these, I'll sleep for a half second. So I'll say time dot sleep, half a second. And now let's just do that whole thing, right? Maybe I'll go until 2020 and, um, and let's run that thing. And you can see on the right that it's going one year after another, it's trying to keep typing them all for me and uh, saving me a bunch of time, right? I'm just trying to be lazy here now. And uh, I guess this will take what? About 30 seconds, right? Once it's all done and we're convinced it's kind of working, um, I'm going to take away that time where I see how fast we can make it go. The 90s now. The 2000s. And there we are to the end. And we have our, our beautiful series here with um, how many hurricanes per year. And, and I could do something like this. I could say, well, on average, we get just a little less than two hurricanes per year in this data set at least. Okay, let, let's just kind of see how fast we can do that whole thing if I take um, over the time. So so watch close on the right. It's not going to last long. I do that and I quickly go through all of them. And uh, much faster now, as fast as selenium can go. And... There we go, done, we have our series. Okay, so, so I think just to kind of make this a complete example, well, let's for, for take a moment to review, right? How do we do this thing? Um, we only had to navigate to the page once, because there's only one page, and we only had to find the two elements on the page once. And then the thing we had to repeatedly do is we had to clear out the text, um, send in some keystrokes to get the year, and then click a button. And then we were trying to figure out how many um, table rows were on the on the page, right? And kind of uh, discounting the header row. This is very similar to something that we'd see in Beautiful Soup, right? I mean, they ha kind of have similar calls there. Um, what I'll say is that Selenium has simpler versions of a lot of the th things that Beautiful Soup does. So, so if you kind of have a simple application, it's possible you could completely stay in the Selenium world and not worry about uh, Beautiful Soup, like we're doing here. Okay, so now we have our series because we keep calling it. Let's actually plot this thing. So I'm going to say s dot plot dot line. And uh, and you know why it didn't show is because I forgot to say matplotlib inline. And then the, maybe the other thing I always like to do, um, did I ever import matplotlib at the top? I'm gonna say from matplotlib import pyplot as plt, it's kind of standard. I'm gonna say plt.rc params of font size equals 16 and uh, now I should actually get a nice plot. Um, well, let's just kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, it's nice to occasionally remember how to do that. So I'm gonna capture that in AX. Maybe I'll make the, the line red. So I'll say color equals red. Um, I need to set some labels. So I'm gonna say set X label uh, year. Let's try running that. 
And so that's a little better. Let me set a Y label, which will be how many hurricanes in that year. And um, then the other thing I want to do is I want to look at these spines. Right, so these spines um, help me kind of set the borders. The spines are at the top, left, bottom, right. And so I'm going to say, you can see it, it acts like a dictionary, right, where these are the keys. So I could grab the, the right spine if I wanted to. And, um, and I could turn it off. I could say set visible uh, false. And then the same deal, same deal on the top. And, uh, and there we go. And that's kind of a nice plot that we were able to build based on all this data we extracted um, from this website.